Greetings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Pastor Marty, and I'm with John G. Lake Ministries in Canada. We're going to be looking at a very important topic this week. It's the topic of the fear of the Lord. This doesn't get talked about really at all anymore. The church has lost the fear of the Lord. Therefore, the world has no fear of the Lord. They have no fear of God. Because apparently to most churches today, God is powerless. God is, is weak. God is, he's just, he's asleep and he's just all about, you know, just blessing. He's become a, a, just a, a blessing God. Now, I believe that God blesses, absolutely. But if we just see God as a vending machine, we've missed the God part of him. The problem is we look at, sometimes religious folk will, will look at him as just God. And then the other people look at him as, as just, you know, dad or, or daddy God or papa God or something like that. Listen, folks, Jesus never said to his father, hey, papa daddy, papa God. He, he, did, he referred to him as, as either God and most of the time he referred to him as, as Father. But not, you know, not Papa Daddy, not vending machine, not Daddy God, nothing like that. I think, in my opinion, it, it is an insult to God when we call him you know, Papa Daddy. There's no reference in, or, or reverence in Papa Daddy. There's no reverence and, and fear in Daddy God. All right. So this is where the church has slipped up. And, and, and like I said, the world has no fear of God because the church has no fear of God. But we're going to look at scripture. We're going to see what scripture says about the fear of the Lord. And, and we need to get this back in the church. Church, hear me when I say this. We need to get the fear of the Lord back into the church. And, and most Christians fear the devil more than they fear God. You need to fear God, not from a position of, of abuse, because God's not an abuser, but you've got to understand that he is all God and he is all Father. He is all joy and he is all wrath at the same time. He is all peace, but he is all anger. He's God the Father. He's, he's everything. Now, God is pouring out his, his love. He's poured out his mercy upon this earth. And people have taken that and they've... And they've perverted it and turned it into some sort of just pure prosperity. Now, I am not against prosperity. The Bible talks about prosperity. But if it's all about prosperity, if it's all about growing a bigger church, if it's all about buying a fancier boat and all about buying a fancier car and how God can bless you and, and, and move you up through the ranks of the, of the rich folk, that's where the danger comes in. I am not against people having things, and neither is the Bible. But we are against the things having you. Now, what's the difference? Because the, the more you desire to have rich wise, riches wise, the less of the fear of the Lord you will have. Because that stuff will try to start to consume you and start to, to occupy your thoughts and occupy your desires and occupy your drive towards that thing. But instead, if you walk in the fear of the Lord and, and walking in in, in, in in the awareness of who God is in you and who you are in Him, you won't be focused on those other things. If you keep your eye single... If you keep your mind focused on the Lord, he will keep you in perfect peace. But if you chase after these other things, if you chase after the things of the world, you will begin to fear not having enough. What do we call that? Greed. And we see that throughout the world today. The, the whole world system is greedy. I can never get enough. You could be sitting on $100 million. You could be sitting on $200 billion and still have an attitude of, I don't have enough. I need more. It, it is a spirit of greed amongst people. But instead of focusing on the Lord, they focus on the treasures of the world. And that's exactly what the Bible says not to. Don't focus on those, those earthly treasures. Focus on the heavenly treasures. And that's where the fear of the Lord is. And, and, and the reverence of the Lord and walking in the reverence of the Lord. But we've lost that. We've lost whether we have 10 people in the church or 10,000 people in the church. It's about the Father. It's not about the, the congregation. It's, it's not even about delivering the best word. It's about representing God the Father. And how do we do that? In our character and our nature. People who, who walk against the word of God yet preach the word of God, have no fear in their lives. As Jesus said, 
these people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from, from you, from, from him. The fear is in the heart. The fear is in who you are. You will walk in character and nature and God's ways when you fear him. When there is that reverence, but I will show you through scripture how the, how the fear of the Lord is not just based off reverence. Oh, I reverence the Lord. Okay, well, if you if you reverenced him and you wanted to be like him and, and you, well, I have a fear of the Lord, then how come your life doesn't line up with that? Why are you chasing the things of the world? Why are you bowing down to a world system? Well, I'm afraid that they're going to come and lock me up. Then you fear the world more than you fear the Lord. Do, do you see that? Well, I'm afraid that I'm, I'm going to be made fun of if I, if I step out or whatever. Well, then you fear men more than you fear the Lord. We have lost the fear of the Lord and we've picked up the fear of man. Well, I better not say anything because, you know, I, I, I don't want to lose any congregation members. I don't want to have a bad Facebook post or I don't want to have, a, you know, bad YouTube review or whatever they are. Listen, it's not about that. It's about fearing God. And, and, and wisdom comes in the fear of the Lord. We have strayed so far from the fear of the Lord, you don't even hear that amongst churches anymore. But yet, many got saved through the fear of the Lord. And I will show you this in Scripture. Church, we need to bring this back. We need to bring this back. We need the spirit of martyrdom to come back in the church. We need the spirit of the fear of the Lord to come back in the church. We need to, to, to realize that He's all God and He's all Father, and we worship Him. We don't worship anything else. We do not worship anything else. We will have no graven image. Well, what's a graven image? Anything you can buy can become a God to you. And unfortunately, this is where a lot of uh, ministries and churches and people have been. And the world has seen that and said, why do I want to go in there anyway? They're all about money. Have you ever heard that? Well, I've been to church and it was all about money. Well, you know, I don't want to go to church because they always ask for money. Money is their number one thing. Listen, money is not the one number one thing. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money that's all evil. Why? Because out of that comes greed and tyranny and, 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 and oppression on the people. Why? Because it's all for me and none for you. And we're seeing this all over the world now. Yet again, the church is barren to the thoughts of it because the church doesn't fear the Lord. Guys, I, I hope you can hear my heart in this. this. This is really important, but let's get into scripture here and look at this. Deuteronomy 6.2 That you might fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments. So look at this. Keeping his commandments and his statutes comes out of what? Fearing the Lord. Do you see that? And I don't think you can reverence him and fear him properly when you call him Papa Daddy and Papa God and all that other kind of stuff. I, 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 I just don't see it. And people can say, well, you, you don't understand, Pastor Marty. I, 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 have, I have such a relationship with the Lord. He's, he's, he's my daddy. Okay, well, guess what? Jesus was his son. He was the son of God, not just a son of God. And Jesus never called him daddy. He called him father. There's a reverence in that. Why? Because he feared the Lord. Let's go on. Which I have commanded thee, you and your son, that your sons, son sons, all the days of his life, that they, his days may be prolonged. So I always like to read scripture forward and I like to read it backwards. If you look at this, your days may be prolonged and, your, and the days of your life will be longer and your son's sons also. Why? Because you followed the commands and the statutes through what? The fear of the Lord, the fear of God. I, I will bring out pages and pages of scripture on this. And I never even took it all out. We'd be here for weeks and weeks if we did that. Next one, Deuteronomy 8, 5 through 6. Thou shalt consider in thine heart that as a man chastises his own son or disciplines his own son, so the Lord thy God chastises thee. Okay? Now, some people look at that and they say, you see, God's putting sickness and disease on you. No, no good father, an earthly father, would put sickness or disease on their son. This is not talking about this. But a good father would what? Discipline his son. Train up your child in the way they should go. When they get older, they will not depart. You discipline and train, not by an iron fist, but by the word of God. By the commandments of God. 
by the statutes of God, by the character and the nature of God is how you train and discipline a child. This is what we're seeing today, folks, is, is, is the churches have not even discipled its own congregation. They've preached emotion for the most part to keep people in the seats, to keep them giving. There's no fear of the Lord. If there was fear of the Lord, there'd be no sin in your life. If the church had, had, had fear of the Lord in it, nobody really there would be living a willful, habitual lifestyle of sin. If a pastor, if a leader feared the Lord, the people they train and coach would as well. But you reproduce who you are. You train the people the way you are. Because that's what's in you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if what's in you is gimme, 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 never get, you're going to be chasing greed. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, inadvertently or, or on purpose training these people to see God as a vending machine. To see God as just the, you know, the genie in the sky. That is false. We need to get back to the heart of worship. And the heart of worship is a fear of the Lord. And, and, and we'll see this going on. Uh, verse 6. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the, the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Here again, and we're going to see it over and over again. We see that keeping commandments has to do with the fear of the Lord. Well, maybe most people don't keep the commandments of God. Why? Because they don't fear the Lord. And nobody will talk about this, or very few anyway. But guess what? I will. Because I have a fear of the Lord. I honor the Lord. I reverence Him. And I do my best to live for Him continually. To, to exercise His character and His nature in this world. To be kind where I need to be kind. To be firm where I need to be firm. To speak truth and love, no matter the cost because I fear the Lord. Let's move on. Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 to 13. And now Israel, do what does the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways. Well, here we are again, fearing the Lord, followed up to, with what? Walking in his, all, his, all his ways. You're going to see this over and over and over again, keeping his statutes, his commandments, walking in his ways, being like him, being an imitator of God comes out of fearing the Lord. And yet we don't hear about it. Look what else comes out of the fear of the Lord to love him. So let's start over again. And now Israel, verse 12, and now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of you? but to fear the Lord God, to walk in his ways, and to love him. So I guess loving God comes out of the fear of the Lord as well. And to serve the Lord God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. But look what it begins with. Fearing the Lord. That, that, that reverence. But I will show you that it's not just about reverence. I will show you as we go through this that it has a, a much deeper meaning at times than just reverential fear. Verse 13, to keep the commandments of God and his statutes, which I command thee this day for your good. Well, look what it says, guys, that it's for your good that you keep his commandments and statutes through what? The fear of the Lord. Can you see it? It says, it doesn't say for his good, it says for your good. So apparently fearing the Lord is good for you. Why? Because it'll keep you in check. The Bible says to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. A good place to start with that is the fear of the Lord. Deuteronomy 13, 4. And you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Well, here we are again. You shall walk after the Lord your God in what? His ways, his commandments, his statutes, his character, in nature, and fear him. You see them coupled together? And keep his commandments and obey his voice. Part of obeying his voice is fearing him. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. What did all that come out of? Fearing the Lord. Deuteronomy 14, 23. And you shall eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, 
to the place his name there, his name is there, the tithe of thy corn, thy wine and of the oil, and the firstlings of the herds and of the flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord God always. So this is talking about first fruits of, 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 of your giving, of your walking this out, that you may learn to fear the Lord. Do you see how we see this over and over and over again? And folks, we're just getting started here. Deuteronomy 17, 19. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. Well, people could say, well, you know, Brother Marty, we're out of the we're out of the law. No, we're not. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. What is the law for us? Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. On this hangs all the law and the prophets. So out of that comes, comes fear. And out of fear comes that. You see how it works? Folks, we again, we need to get back to this. We we why do you think they, the people in, 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 in the Bible days they, they, and, and throughout history, they, they martyred themselves? They allowed themselves to be martyred. Why? Because they had a fear of the Lord. They knew what their, what their great reward was. But most people nowadays, their salvation is so shaky that they don't have a conviction in that. So if, if they were to die, if they were to give themselves up as an offering to the Lord, where am I going to go? They question their faith. They questioned their salvation because they had no real reverence or no, no, no fear of the Lord. No real degree because generally they're, 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 they're too busy with their big fancy cars and their big fancy churches and things like that. They're too busy living in, in willful habitual sin. And they miss out on the things of the Lord. They miss out on, on, on the, the ability to be offered as a sacrifice. Whether on this earth or in death because they feared the Lord. Deuteronomy 31.12 Gather the people together, men and women and, and, and children, and thy stranger that is within your gates, that they may hear and they may learn and fear the Lord your God and to observe to do all the words of this law. So again, fear has to do with keeping in check and, and, and doing. Right, doing what Jesus would do if he was on this earth, doing the will of the Father, folks. This this is really really important. I, I, I you know, you may not have really heard this before. You may have heard it to a degree, but this 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 teaching has disappeared from really any church that I've ever been involved with. Any any church that we've ever gone to to minister, we don't really hear this talk. Because we've lost the focus of who God really is. Satan has blinded the people, church members, that sin doesn't matter anymore. That how you live has no consequences. Folks, that is not true. We must fear the Lord. Joshua 4.24 That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. And like I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be bringing out and hammering a lot of scripture here. Why? Because I want to prove everything by scripture. I don't want to just prove everything by, you know, the book of Marty's opinion. Scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture talks about this. Joshua 24.14 now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods, little g, which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and you serve the Lord. So put away any other God. We're not in, in you know, the times of, of, of Egypt and wandering around the desert and things like that. Well, a lot of people are wandering around the desert in their own life, but put away anything that is not a, of a God. That God that you've made a God in your life will distract you. And, and, and say if it's a, if it's a, a, it's a possession. And again, I'm not against possessions. I'm not against having things, but if that position, that possession, something that you own, owns you, that is a God to you. And if you fear losing that thing, it has become a God to you. If you fear losing your job, 
that thing has become a God to you. Well, people could say, well, Brother Marty, I need to pay my bills. Yeah, 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 but you're looking to go, you're looking to your job as your source. The job is not your source. God is your source. So if you're afraid you're going to lose your 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 job, you let's let's just say if you're you, you, somebody says to you, hey, listen, you can't talk about Jesus at your at your job because we're going to fire you, and you say, okay, well then I can't be who I'm supposed to be at my job because if I lose my job, I'm going to I'm going to lose it, and I'm going to lose my house, I'm going to lose my car, I won't have any of these different things. You don't think God's going to come through to you, so you're fearing what you have, your possessions, your your your, your job, your paycheck, more than you're fearing the Lord. When a world system tells you to stand up and do something that is contrary to the word of God, and you do that, you don't have any real degree of the fear of the Lord. You fear this. You can't compromise. Fear will always bring compromise, and compromise weakens faith. When people begin to compromise in their lives, they begin to slowly separate themselves from the truth to the word of God. Folks, we need to get back to this. This world needs to see children of God standing upon a rock and saying, I will not be shaken, come what may. And you stand up and, and you fight. Is it pleasant? No. I'm sure Paul getting beat down and whipped all those times wasn't pleasant. I'm sure the Lord Jesus Christ on the whipping post and on the cross wasn't very pleasant. And we just want to live a pleasant Christianity. Now I get nobody really wants to sign up for it, but are you willing and are you living a life that may get you in trouble? Because this world is very quickly trying to strip away the gospel. This world is very quickly trying to strip away the word of God. And like I've said before, for most Christians, it wouldn't really necessarily matter because they don't really listen to the word of God or read the word of God anyway. So just because they got Bible stacked up in their house and their bookshelf, it doesn't mean they're in the Word of God. You got to get the Word in you. Because if they were to steal every, every Bible on the earth, if every Bible and every form of communication of the Bible would disappear on this earth, would you have enough Word in you to last you the rest of your days on, uh, on this earth? Get the Word in you. The Word isn't just about a book. It's, it's living and active. So if the book goes missing... Do the words go missing? No, because his words are spirit and they're life. They're not just on a page. Now we need the word of God. We need it. We need the Bible. We need to be in that word of God. But again, if they took all that away, would you have enough word in you? You've got, the word that's in you is what you live by. Not just the words that may be on a book on a shelf that you pull out every six months or at Christmas or Easter or something like that. It's the words, those, those, the words on the page aren't going to help you unless they're in you, unless they're active and living in your life. And for most people, we know of churches that have said, you know what, don't even bring your Bible anymore. These are Christ, supposedly Christian churches. Don't even bring your Bible anymore. We don't really use it. You're not Christians, period. You need to be in your word, but more importantly, the word needs to be in you because what's in you is, is what you're going to live by because out of the abundance of the heart, heart the mouth speaks. Do you see how important this is? 2 Chronicles 19.9 And he charged them saying, you shall, you shall do this in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. So if you fear the Lord, you will have a perfect heart and you will live faithfully. Psalms 19.9 The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. But the fear of the Lord is clean. It's not perverted. The fear of the Lord endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. But notice it starts with the fear of the Lord. Psalm 25, 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. To who? Those who fear him. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Psalm 33, 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. They're not. They're not because the children of God don't fear the Lord for the most part. 
They're not because they think God is a joke. We just, we just, we just had a, a five-year-old child tell us that, 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 that my mom and dad, they, t- they tell me that Jesus isn't real, that, he, that he's a fairy tale. And we said he's very real. And we sang worship songs together. And, and she, she knows a, a worship song and she's five years old and in her, in her, her car seat, she's, she's lifting her hand to the Lord. We're putting it in her and the devil's trying to take it from her. Why? Because I don't fear repercussion from them. I fear that little child not being able to come to Christ because somebody tells her that Christ is a, is a fairy tale like the Easter Bunny or like Santa Claus or something. They have no fear of the Lord because the church has no fear of the Lord. And these are people I know that have been churched before. But they didn't see the power. They didn't see the example. They didn't hear the urgency. They were taught just to appease emotion. And emotion has no lasting effect to it. Emotion really has no conviction in it. And this is the problem, folks, is we're not seeing a conviction preached in anything we do today. We're not seeing repentance preached anymore. It's, 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 all, it's all good. Every, everything's all good. God's just so well pleased with you. Wrong. The Bible says if you're not living in faith, you can't please God. For anybody who lives by the flesh cannot please God. It's faith that pleases God. And if you're living according to the world, you're not in faith. If you get thrown around and tossed around with every wind of doctrine, you're not in faith. Faith is never shaken. Faith always gets what it comes for. Faith is the truest thing on this earth. Faith in God's word. Faith in who he is. Faith always gets what it comes for. Faith never takes no from a devil. But because we have no fear of the Lord, we give in anything that comes our way as Christians. Psalm 33, 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the, of the world, inhabitants of the world, stand in awe of him. Look at this. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The church needs to be representing him on this earth so the world will stand and say, oh my God, my God. We just came off teaching a a divine healing technician course. We saw a baby healed. We saw knees healed. We saw a man that had um, Lyme disease healed. The skin, when he had a shower a couple of days later, the skin was falling off his body. New skin was there and his bumps were disappearing. The man was deaf and his ears popped open. Another man had a a massive cancer on his chest and it was causing fluid around his heart. He was in the hospital awaiting surgery the next day. We prayed for him on the phone, 30-second prayer. The next morning, he was released from hospital with no surgery. The fear of the Lord does what the Word of God says. If you don't do what the Word of God says, you don't fear the Lord. If you, if you don't do what the Word of God says because you're afraid of what the world's going to say, you fear the world. It's a very dangerous place to live. Psalm 33, 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him. Think about that. The eye of the Lord is upon those who fear Him. Upon them that hope in His mercy. It's amazing. The eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him and delivereth them. So the the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Do do you see this? Folks, we're just getting started here. The fear of the Lord has to be at the forefront of your life. And like I'm saying, I'm not saying we have to fear him like he's going to put sickness or disease on us and he's just waiting to to, to bring his big stick down from heaven and, and club us. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about understanding who he is, what God is capable of, what we're capable of by the Holy Spirit, standing on the truth of the word of God, knowing that there is a judgment coming to this earth. 
If people and Christians believed that there was a judgment day coming, they would live their life according to that. But people say, well, you know, when I know God's coming or, you know, I'll get ready next week and I'm just not ready right now to, to give my life to the Lord. I'm, you know, I'm one of those fun Christians. You know, I like to get drunk and party. I'm just one of those fun Christians. No, you're a sinner. It's just as simple as that. You've chosen to live in sin. One of those fun Christians heals the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. That is far better than anything the world could ever offer you. If a person truly believed that there is a judgment day coming, they would live according. Why? Because we don't know if that judgment day is in the next five minutes. And people say, well, you know, the Bible talks about this. Well, you know, my master's a long ways off. It's, it's no problem. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to party. I'm going to hang out and I'm going to do these things. And the master comes and it's too late. What about the parable of the, of the 10 virgins? The master came in and, and half of them didn't have enough oil burning in their lamp. Why? Because they had gone cold. If you fear the Lord and you keep that in front of you, you will not grow cold. Your love will not wax cold for the Father. You will, you will not walk away from your first love. Everybody has a first love in their life. Everybody. I don't care what it is. If it's a sin, an animal, a television show, if it, be, if it, if it comes before God, that is your first love. Period. God needs to be our first love. Now, I have a pet and there are certain things that I like to watch. But that has no bearing on how much I love God. Those things don't come before the Lord. He, he comes before everything else. So guys, I hope you're getting this in you. This is really important. As again, as, like I said, we're just getting warmed up. So let's, let's, let's keep going here. Uh, we're going to get to some other scriptures uh, next week. And um, we will keep pushing this and see where this goes. And you'll see the fear of the Lord is so important. Thank you for tuning in this week. We'll see you soon.